uh, last problem, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when we are dealing with the and, the reason why I like rewriting it as an and so you guys can see, because sometimes I might just have problems that just are written as and. They might just say this and that. But it's important I want to implant in your brain and, intersection, intersection, intersection. Or is inclusive. It doesn't have to be true for both of them. It could be true for one or the other or for both of them. All right? Um, <clears throat> so for this one, when we have an or, just like when we broke the other one into an and, you solve it separately. All right? So in this case, obviously I have a fraction, which all, a lot of you hate. So if you guys remember with fractions, all we need to do to get rid of fractions um, here is, yeah, I could multiply by 8 on both sides, then divide by 3. But we could also just get rid of my fraction. Same thing, I look at my variables being multiplied by 3 eighths. So I divide by 3 eighths, which is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. Anytime you take a number multiplied by a reciprocal, it's going to go to 1. 1 times x is just x. Over here, I rewrite this negative 6 as a fraction. So I write it as negative 6 over 1. And as you guys remember, when we multiply fractions, we just multiply directly across. Negative 6 times 8 is going to be a negative 48. Divided by 3 will be a negative 16. So therefore, I have x is less than negative 16. Yep. Now, the next one is I have x is being multiplied by 5, so I need to divide by 5. So x is going to equal, uh, oh, I'm sorry, x is greater than 2 fifths, which you could also write, I think when. 40%. Um, but thank you for raising your hand and then blurting out the answer. I'll call on you, though, do think. Um, I think when graphing, ladies and gentlemen, that it's much easier just to go ahead and convert. Excuse you, ma'am. I think it's easier when you guys are graphing these to rewrite them as decimals so you can plot the points easier than fractions. So I would, yes, use my calculator or use my understanding of converting fractions to decimals to rewrite that as 0 0.40. The reason why is when I do my number line, I'm still going to keep my number line as integers. All right. So I draft up a number line. And obviously, we need to contain uh, negative 16. And we need to contain um, 0 .4, 0 0.40, which is between 0 and 1. So let's just do 2, 1, 0. Negative 1, negative 2. You can go by 2s, you can go by 3s, you can go by 4s. That's perfectly fine. I don't like 19. So now we need to go ahead and plot both of these points. And when we plot both of these points, negative 16 is obviously going to be here. And x is greater than 0 0.40 is going to be over here. All right. We know that 0 0.40 is going to be in between 0 and 1. So I'm not asking you guys to be exactly pretty. I can see your answers here. I just want to make sure you guys estimate it between 0 and 1. Now, the next thing is I'm going to show you guys um, how to do test points. You can see from the inequality here that both of these are going to be not a part of the solution, so they're going to be left open. Um, I like using test points, though, when dealing with negative numbers because I think negative numbers get people, a lot of people confused. So again, the way to do test points is just pick a point to the left and pick a point to the right. One of those test points is going to make your inequality true. The other one's going to make it false. So we need to determine which one makes it true which one makes it false. So all you do is take in your two points that you chose and plug them in for x. So negative 18 is less than negative 16, or negative 14 is less than negative 16. And again, the way that I like to think about um, negative numbers is by how much money you owe. Think about owing money. So if you look at negative 18, if you owe somebody negative $18, do you have less money than if you owed them $16? Yes. 
So this would be true. If you owe somebody $14, do you have less money than if you owe them $16? No. no, that's false. So this point is false. This point is true. We always shade towards where it's true. Because if it's true to the left, that means all points are going to be true to the left. This point 0, I'm not going to do another test point. Um, you guys can see what numbers are larger than 0 0.40. Obviously, that's going to be my whole numbers. So that's going to go to the right. And obviously, these negative numbers are going to be less than, so we wouldn't grad to less. So you guys can see in this or, we're not concerned about the intersection. All right. One thing, they don't intersect at all anyways. But we're not concerned about intersection. We're only concerned about intersection when we have um, a graph or when we have an and competent inequality. Guys, 